my watercolor friends. Today I'm doing my favorite fruit, lemon. I love, love lemon. I love it in my water. I use it a lot in my cooking and it's just a very fun citrus summer inspired project that I thought I would share with you. Something simple. So let's get right into it. You're going to wet the lemon area really well with some fresh water and I'm going to go straight into dropping in the yellows and greens that I'm using. So I do have Green Gold by Daniel Smith, and then I'm coming in with a very nice saturated cadmium yellow light, and that was Holbein that I used for that color. There is some light spots on that right hand side. I was just lifting the color so that th that area is lighter. Now we want to have a three dimensional look to our lemon. So we are going to add some darker colors on that left hand side and on the bottom where the light will not reach. So I'm bringing in some warmer yellows and the warmer yellow color I'm using is that ISO Yellow Deep. Don't ask me how you pronounce it because I don't know. I just short form it to ISO Yellow Deep. And all of the tools and supplies that I use are in the description of the video if you want to check that out. For those brownish little marred spots, because no lemon is perfect, right? So I'm just using a little bit of burnt sienna for that. And I'm not even waiting for that to dry because we could rotate our paper. So I'm just moving right on over there to that first leaf. And um, we're working that in the same manner too. Starting with a very warm color, I'm dropping in my yellows and green gold as my base color. And I'm increasing the saturation around the edges of my leaf and uh, along the middle part with some sap green. Now to get the darkest areas, I am mixing some Perusian blue with my sap green. So everything is still wet and I want to put in these areas that are darker while it could still all bleed and mix together on the paper. Because when it mixes on the paper by itself, it just does great things, but all, all on its own. So I'm tilting my paper to see if the sheen of the paper is starting to go away. So when it is starting to go away, that is the perfect time to lift or what I like to call doing controlled blooms. So I'm using a script liner brush and I'm wetting it. Then I'm just running through the areas where I want to put those veins. A after each time I go through my leaf, I re-wet my brush. And you also, this is very important folks, you also want to make sure you take the bead of water off of your brush before putting it through the leaf. Otherwise, you might get a really large bloom and a back run, and it'll sort of wreck the effect. So I would suggest practicing on a scrap piece of paper. That always helps. So again, I'm not waiting for anything to dry. I'm flipping my paper, going in with my warm yellow and my gold green as my base color coming over that with the sap green. And I'm just working those colors into the leaves. So to get, to get a consistency, you wanna follow the same directions and use the same colors so that the leaves look like they're from the same plant.
once your paper's dry enough to do those controlled blooms using a clean, damp script liner brush, I'm adding in some of the veins. So I'm actually lifting the color by using just a wet brush, not a sopping wet brush, a damp brush to pull up those tiny details. It's actually kind of cool <laughs> watching it take effect like that. So in our last leaf, I'm doing the exact same thing. Turn your paper, don't have to wait for anything to dry. So literally this whole first layer took like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And the only additional layer I'm doing is going to be on the lemon. Just because it's not as three-dimensional as it needs to be, we still need to put those shadow areas. So we're on the home stretch, folks. We're doing this last leaf, going in with those lemony colors, coming in with the green gold. You see how I'm working the leaf the same way each time. Okay, and I like to let the colors mingle on the paper when they're wet like that instead of mixing them together. You get a lot more depth of colors and it just looks prettier when they merge by themselves. So I'm increasing that darkness by taking less water, more paint with my sap green and some touches of Perusian blue to get a shadowy color. And then that last step is the controlled blooms, making those veins with a damp script liner brush. So look at how pretty those leaves turned out. They're just so cute. We're going to let the whole thing dry before we go back in to get those shadows on the lemon. So starting off this second layer by upping the saturation of the lemon a little bit and putting in that really bright cadmium yellow. While everything is still wet, I'm coming in with some burnt sienna. I do have iso, not iso yellow, I have quinacridone in gold, and that's a stronger, darker yellow that I'm using for those shadowy areas as well. getting my stem in there real quick because that one was just kind of floating there. A little bit of some uh, details at the top of the stem. I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. I tell you it's going by fast here in Pennsylvania and I have to be gearing up for the fall soon. So I'm using those darker warm colors that I talked about. Um, I have the browns, the burnt siennas. I'm just kind of mixing that with my yellow to get that uh, shadowy side on that left-hand side. And we still have our bright uh, spot on the top right that does give it a three dimension. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. It's simple and fast. And if you like my artwork, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.